Okay, so we're just going to um, start it off, talk to about the recruitment process a little bit for university and college student athletes and kind of just break it down for you guys a little bit. Um, it may be kind of a scary process for you guys, but I'll try to break it down and make it as simple as it can be. So get into it. Um, so the first thing here is um, I just want you guys to leave um, with some sort of information that will be able to benefit you guys. So I know it's tough sometimes to sit down and try to listen to a lecture through your laptop and this would all be much easier in person, but I just hope that some sort of information will be able to help you guys in your future with um, athletics and things like that. So when I was your age, um, I wish I would have had more advice from my older peers and if I even so listen to it a little bit more. Um, it's always nice to hear information from someone who is dealing with it firsthand and it's a little bit more of the reality for them. So it's kind of an insight on the student athletes themselves and they kind of know the details a bit more and it's kind of easier to grasp from an athlete themselves. So just hoping you'll be able to understand this process from another perspective, um, just make it simplified a little bit more. Um, so yeah. Just hope this is helpful. Um, jumping into our first step here for um, this recruitment process. Um, so the main first step here is to do your research. Um, you need to take the time to explore. There's so many options out there for different careers and paths and universities, colleges, whatnot. So know what you want in life and kind of try to break that down, look into schools, look at options, know what works for you, um, kind of know what Bits and your learning style so you're able to find coaches, schools, teams, things like that that um, is perfect for you. So you're able to do some research, make a list, um, find all the needs that you're looking for in your potential schools, um, and then just make sure that some of your options check all those boxes. So whatever that may be. So um, also a big issue or kind of just something to keep in mind. Um, and something that maybe overlooks at some points is making sure that your academics match up with schools and what the school offers. So I'm sure some of you may be dead set on a school um, um, for your future, going to U of M or U of C or something like that. And then finally, when you get to the time, oh, they don't offer this program and I was hoping for that. So kind of just exploring, taking the time um, to really look into all the little details that aren't as exciting as you would hope for. But yeah, just take the time and explore. Um, so after that, you kind of have an idea of what you need and what you're looking for and what you want. You need to reach out. Um, this kind of leads me to the misconception number one that people may um, come to mind with the recruitment process. And that's that coaches will be coming to running to you all the time. So if you have a good game, you may just think, oh, they have to notice that and come running to me. So. Um, just make sure you show initiative in this process and be vulnerable, put yourself out there. Um, it's always, always easier to put yourself on the coach's radar. Um, and it's always tough to put yourself out there and just know that you're not the only one doing this. There's other student athletes that are going through this process and they've seen this through years before. So just know that it's completely normal to feel uncomfortable during this stage in this process. But that's kind of that. Um, and yeah, as tough as it may be, coaches look for um, that confidence and knowing what you want and that vulnerability and showing that you want to be a part of this team. So it's always super beneficial to reach out. And if this will help you later down the line, then you might as well get on it early. But yeah, so reaching out. Um, next one, this isn't so much uh, a step in the recruitment process, but just kind of keeping it in the back of the mind, in the back of your mind about connections and kind of how everyone knows everyone and it may not seem like that or how your potential future dream coach could have a link back to your high school chemistry teacher, but there always may be a connection and they always, always may get an insight on you. So this kind of just makes sure you're a good person and if you're how you display yourself and hold yourself in public and even tournaments and things like that. So there's actually just a little example with me and um, I was talking to a school in Ontario and this coach in Ontario actually got into contact with a coach in Winnipeg who were kind of our rivalry, rivalries, that team. So he was kind of just like a simple question like, hey, like, what do you think of 
this cat's club and what do you think of this girl? Just a simple conversation like that may either make or break my opportunity to go to that future school, right? So just an example like that, something as simple as that. So make sure you always display good sportsmanlike manners, shaking hands, things like that, good attitude, displaying yourself correctly. Um, yeah, people notice these little things and that all fits into the big picture eventually being recruited someday. So you never know who's watching your games. Coaches may be always actively recruiting. Um, so yeah, just keep this in the back of your mind and aware of how you hold yourself. And yeah, that can really make or break your opportunity for being recruited. So yeah, that's about connections. Um, next little step here is about what really matters. So this is another misconception that um, uh, may throw people off sometimes, but it's basically mentioning that I'll get recruited if I'm the best player on my team. Um, and this may be the case sometimes, skill and ability is obviously one of the biggest factors for being recruited to some teams, but also um, it's not always focused on your athletics as much as we would hope to sometimes, but your attitude, your mindset, education, your marks, your personality, how you hold yourself and your values, they all contribute to um, this overall picture of being recruited and your future with being a student athlete. So keep this in mind. Um, yeah, kind of just balance yourself and keep in mind all of the little factors that can play a role in this. Um, how you treat others, little things like that. This will always help you in the long run. So keeping that in mind, you don't always need to be worried about having the best game of your life or not if you're worried about that because there's other things that matter too. So. If you're having the worst game of your life and you know that there may be scouts watching or people out there watching you just know that you can keep your cheering on your teammates and holding yourself and just kind of keep moving forward and coaches will notice this as it is very important for your future in athletics um the next little part here is about starting this process early um this is something that was kind of new to me um i actually started working on recruit and like getting myself out there in grade 12. So um, a little late to the process and I um, got pretty lucky, I guess. But um, yeah, like you want to get yourself out there, even like high school, grade 10 and 11, like get yourself out there to help you in the future. So you may as well get on this process early. Um, so yeah, it'll benefit you in the long run. So it goes in hand in hand with being vulnerable. So you want to get yourself out there and make yourself known to the coaches. Um, get yourself on that radar. Um, and eventually this will make the process easy for coaches to reach out to you when they want you on their team in the years to come. So if they're able to see video or clips of you of how you play in grade 10, and then they're able to keep up with that and see how you play in grade 11 and 12 and see how you progress throughout the years, um, they'll be able to understand a bit more of how you'll be in 2025 when they need you on your roster or whatnot. So just this makes the process so much easier for you and the coaches um, to evaluate your potential in the years to come. So I urge you to start this process early. I know lots of you are quite young already, so still got a couple more years to go, but just keep this in mind. Um, kind of just continuing off of that um, is after you've kind of looked into schools to know what they offer and you actually have that formalized plan of what you need in a school, you will actually begin to start emailing the coaches directly. So you'll be able to do some more research, look up the academics program and actually get the personal email of the coach. Um, kind of just contacting, contacting them directly helps this process. So you'll be able to send a highlight reel of yourself playing throughout last couple seasons up-to-date video, um, tell yourself a little about them or tell them about you. Um, yeah, recent achievements, just kind of keep it fun and exciting, things like that. Um, so yeah, keep, start with that initial email. Um, make sure you're persistent. Um, you follow up if maybe they don't reply in a week or so, just get back in touch and say, hey, just hoping you're able to check out that previous email. Just Make sure you're confident in your decision and they'll be able to see this and know that you want to be on that team and you're pushing for that. So that's a good thing is to be vulnerable. Um, when they do reply, if they reply, how it goes from there. You want to push for a call, phone call, video call, FaceTime, things like that. Um, just makes it a bit more of a personal connection, putting a name to a face. You're more than just an email or a number type of deal. 
Um, kind of touching back to the highlight reels, there's many online sites that can help you in this area, um, looking at different schools, getting in contact with coaches, making these videos of yourself, things like that. Um, but yeah, also while you are starting this process, you want to make sure that you're just applying to schools that you may be comfortable um, accepting an offer from later on. So don't just go out there and hand out 30 different applications to schools. You want to make sure that they're realistic choices for you and what you need and want in your future and your athletic program. So just make sure that you are putting some time into that decision as well. Um, kind of to put it to a little bit more of an example, I'll explain what happened with me with my experience of recruitment. So like I said before, I started extremely, extremely late to this process, um, but Still got a little bit lucky, I guess. So um, I actually just made a highlight reel of my plays like that, covered the bases with those, um, and then made a list of schools that made sense for me. Um, so I did some more research on those um, finalized schools that I had picked, um, kind of looked for more open spots um, in my position that I played, seeing if it was realistic to go to a school if they had 10 people already signed in my position, just kind of doing a little bit more detailed research, um, finalizing that the programs matched up with what I wanted with um, my education wise, seeing if I had any family in that area, if I'd be comfortable living in locations. So kind of just some more realistic um, research here and finalizing that. Um, so another thing that I actually experienced firsthand was school visits and if um, an opportunity arises to um, attend a school visit um, I urge you to experience that and accept that so school visit is basically when it's usually 48 hours and you go and visit this school and you usually practice with them meet the coaching staff the players things like that but these school visits teach you so much and um, yeah it affects your decision well it affected my decision um, extremely so it can like when I was there I actually lived or stayed the nights with um, the girls in residence um, and like you you can learn about that environment and cafeteria and the campus and things like that these um, just act as such a informative way and to help make these decisions for you and give you a little bit more insight on the school so um, I do urge you to say yes to these school visits if that opportunity arises um, yeah they're pretty beneficial even to practice with the team learning how the coaches um, coach and the players and how everything works in the athletics department and education as well. So that is a great opportunity to do that. Um, but when it, what ended up happening to me, because I am playing with BU, so it was actually um, in my grade 12 year I was playing with the Cats Club. Um, so we had a tournament at HLC actually. Um, just after a tournament, the coach Lee Carter just pulled me aside and just asked if we could have a quick conversation. So even though this is all um, stretched out and it could be a big process of sending coaches emails, it could also just be as quick as a conversation after a tournament. So make sure you're always prepared. Um, you know what you're looking for ahead of time. Um, like I said, after your research and checking all your boxes and stuff like that. So once Lee talked to me, I was able to know that, okay, they do have the program that I was going for and I would see myself, can see myself here in the future. So I was able to accept that opportunity, but just because I was prepared and I knew what I was looking for um, with my student athlete future. So yeah, just always be prepared for, you never know what's going to come up after a tournament or things like that. So just be ready. Um, and just wrapping up here, kind of your final decision. Um, it's a big deal, like being in charge of your next five plus years of your life. Um, there's going to be lots of pressure on you from friends and family and things like that. But um, I urge you to just do what makes you happy and doing what you see yourself doing. Um, yeah, you may be spending the next five years in this place. So making sure that that fits for you and that makes sense for you where your living conditions may be, if you're ready to move away from home already, if you could see yourself living in residence, cooking, cleaning for yourself. So a lot goes into this process. So just take this time and be as prepared as you can. Um, but yeah, that is kind of that. But that wraps it up for me. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for your time. And I'm hoping that I can make this big stressful process a little bit less scary and simplified for you guys. So. Thank you for your attention and I just hope that this can help you in the future to come. So thanks guys.